we're back in the yard. So um, this one, this is a Daikin uh, uh, 4MXS series. Uh, so basically another company came out here. They kept charging refrigerant. They couldn't find the leaks. So they apparently they injected dye. So you can see the dye there. Um, they couldn't find the leak, so we got called out. Um, and I actually found the leak, <coughs> which it's right back in there, right there. So we're gonna actually just change out the entire coil, the yeah, whole outdoor coil. Um, and then we'll pressurize it. I know that there's dye in it, so I'm gonna put a fresh charge in it. I'm not looking forward to recovering it with my new gauges because now these are gonna be contaminated with dye but what it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and recover what refrigerant's left in it. Uh, and then we're gonna probably take this apart completely so I can move it, because I will have to braze in a new one. So I'm gonna have to unbraze it there and unbraze it there. And then the whole thing should just come out, so. So even though that we know that there's low charge and um, we know there's a leak, we're not gonna vent to the atmosphere. We don't do that. EPA requirements that we recover no matter what. Uh, some of you might just vent to the atmosphere because your whole thing is like, well, it's gonna leak into the air anyway. Well, there's still a little bit of refrigerant in there and I can prevent that little amount from going into the, into the atmosphere. That's good enough for me. Um, and honestly, I don't know how much refrigerant's in this unit. Could have three pounds in it, could have three ounces. We don't know until we do it. This also tells us how low our system is because uh, we're wearing, weighing the charge. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in for all of you that's told me just let it out in the atmosphere. Definitely not gonna do that, I never will. Especially not gonna film me doing that for evidence. <laughs> but uh, even if I'm not filming, I always recover, even if there's only two ounces. Now obviously if it's like at two PSI or something, mm, we're not gonna recover it at that point. But you know, use your best judgment, follow the EPA license licensing rules uh, so when i was talking to uh, daikin apparently every time somebody orders an outdoor coil it's because the unit doesn't have a pan heater so they're thinking that because it doesn't have a pan heater and during the winter we get freezing temperatures when it defrosts the water still chills on the bottom and then refreezes and pokes a hole in the coil so pretty much they told us we have to install this to prevent it from happening again so this is what we're going to add we're going to install a pan heater as well once we get that coil installed so we only got about half a pound out of it. This thing holds 6.17 pounds of R410A. And I know you're gonna say, well, why don't you just let it out in the atmosphere? Well, I didn't know there was eight pounds. There could have been three pounds in there. Uh, it's hard to go by static pressures, you know, when the unit's off. It was about 80 PSI. I figured there was probably about a pound in there, but obviously I was off by eight pounds or eight ounces. So anyway, uh, now we got that out. I'm gonna disconnect all these. I've labeled them so I know, remember where they all go. And it's very important that when you're brazing on these mini splits that you run nitrogen. You do not, there's no line dryer. It's got mi micro screens. Uh, so that can get plugged very easily. So you wanna minimize any contaminants to the system. All right, so we got it all disconnected and I've moved it so I have better access. So we're gonna debraze it here and we're gonna debraze it right here. Okay, there was some of this goopy stuff that just covers that. I'm hoping the new coil comes with a new one. Uh, if it doesn't, shame on you, Daikin. I'll have to try to reuse that, but basically it just insulates all these lines. Um, you do need to remove the coil sensor, which is this guy here, it just pops right in there. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up and then we're gonna set up our nitrogen flow um, and then we're gonna debraze this and then uh, try to take it out. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go. I've got this just to keep the heat away from, you know, any other components. We got the fire blocks so the compressor cover doesn't catch fire. Um, we'll be running nitrogen right here. So we always want to purge first and then switch it back to braze mode. Okay. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and get, get, a, get this uh, taken off. So we got that disconnected. I'm holding it here, letting the solder dry up. That way it will uh, won't stick to it if it touches. All right, so we got to remove this outdoor fan assembly. 
So there's two screws down there. Those come out. All right, you gotta unplug it from the board. So it usually runs right through here and then in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this up like that so it bends up, pops out, bring it towards us. And then the back part will slide towards the coil like that and then pick it straight up. It comes out just like that. All right, so we're gonna remove the cage. So we've taken the two screws off there and there. And then this is hooked into the coil. Pull it straight up towards you, it comes right off. Okay, so we removed a screw there and we removed a screw there. And those are the two that are holding it in place so it should just pop right out. Okay, so it looks like there's one more screw. So this electrical panel is attached to it. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a screw back there. So yeah, there's the screw right there. can't see it but it's right there you see my screwdriver yeah we got it out uh, so basically there's like a little groove thing here and you just slide it straight up out uh, that's where that screw was so total pain to get to uh, so now that we got the coil out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum and clean this all up for the new one pop slide the new one in there and then we'll braze it in put everything back together and then we'll also install that uh, pan heater all right, well, we got the pan all cleaned up. We're going to go ahead and slide the new uh, coil in there and then uh, go from there. All right, so we got that screw in there. That was a total pain. Now we got to get this back in place, put the screw back there, screw there, and the screw on the other side to hold it in place. And then I think we're going to put the pan heater in while I have that fan out just because there'll be more room to work. Because uh, I think we have to drill some holes or whatnot for the wires. But uh, yeah, so. All right, so we got our pan heater installed. Um, so th there's two holes, pre-tapped holes right here. You screw it in there. This one you have to do, use a self-tapping screw. Um, so now we need to run our wire and it's gonna run alongside the wire for the condenser fan motor and then right around through there. So we're gonna do that. So these little holes right here, that's to hold these little things here so basically you stick those in there to hold the, the wire in place see just like that so we need to make those holes a little bit bigger so we'll use a step bit just to make them big enough for the plastic uh, clip to fit in there so right here is where the fan motor wire goes through there's a little break off tab here we're going to snap that off so we can get the pan heater wires through there as well all right, so these directions suck. Um, so basically, we need to basically hook it up to constant power. And I like how it says, so this is a C-type unit. Uh, so it says, for C-type, or for type C models, connect to the last block, terminal block, of the terminal blocks in use. All right, so that's the thermostat side. So that's going to be this wire. It's supposedly supposed to be the white harness, but they're both black, so... but. We know it's the thermostat because it's the thinner wire. And then this is the heater side because it's the thicker wire. So basically, on D right here, because there's no space here, we're gonna connect uh, the thermostat side to this one here back there uh, under the white one, and then the heater side under the black one. And these are always receiving uh, high voltage and it will be energized by this uh, thermostat. Now, so yeah, these instructions are terrible. So it's kind of half read the instructions and half figure it out for yourself. So yeah. So we got our all hooked up. It's hooked up right in here, right back there. It's hard to see, but yeah. So basically, the thermostat side of it, which is a small wire, goes into the white side, and then the heater side, which is the thick wire, goes into the black side. Now that we got all that done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, braze our coil on, and then uh, get everything reconnected, and then need to remember to plug this back in so yeah we got our connections put in so I had to use a swedger just to make these a little bit bigger so I could fit them in there because they do have a little bit of solder left off left over and I don't want I want to try to minimize heating it as much as possible uh, so we're gonna go ahead and braze that braze that we'll be running nitrogen again so we're gonna purge first and now we're gonna go ahead and put it into braze mode and let's get brazing well it looks like I ran out of storage space so uh, we didn't get this part brazed, but it's brazed. Um, so it's pretty nice, pretty easy. 
So um, just make sure you wipe everything off. And then, so now we're gonna go ahead and reconnect everything and then we'll pressurize it to make sure my braze points don't leak. So of course this one doesn't come with anything. It doesn't come with the insulation, doesn't come with nothing. It doesn't even come with the little clip that holds that uh, thermistor in place. So I had to take it off the old one. So yeah, don't forget to grab that old clip. We're gonna do our quarter inch fittings first um, be before we put these so they're out of the way. Um, so you always wanna do the quarters on these Daikins first because if you put these on here, then they're in the way. So it makes it easier to, to torque, torque your stuff down if these are out of the way. Uh, so these are quarter inch lines. So we're gonna need 15 Newton meters. So we got the two quarter inch ones on there at 15 Newton meters. Um, so now we have the, the three eighths, which is this one, and then the five eighths, which is that one. So the three eighths we have to do at um, at 33, and the five eighths is gonna be at uh, 62. We got them all torqued up. Uh, I did realize this is not a 5 8 this is a half. Um, so I adjusted the uh, torque off camera, but uh, yeah. So anyway, um, we're gonna pressurize with nitrogen and if it holds initially, I'll start putting this thing back together. So we got it under pressure. Uh, I don't think you can see it, but I started at uh, 352.0 and I'm at 352.1. Currently at uh, 13 minutes, I've been putting this back together. And uh, Looks like that uh, that thermostat for the pan heater, it's actually, this uh, the shroud here holds it out of the way, so I don't have to worry about the fan blade hitting it. So I guess that's why they didn't have anything to attach it to the side. That just kind of holds it in place. So that's cool. Pretty much got it all back together. Um, we've gained 1.3 uh, PSI, or 1.4 it looks like, for 34 minutes. So pretty sure we got all the leaks. So I'm going to go ahead and get the vacuum going, go to lunch. When I get back, hopefully the vacuum will be done. I already got it all wired up and we'll charge refrigerant. All right, so our vacuum's done. We're at uh, 478 microns. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and charge six pounds in this thing. So we got all the refrigerant charged in there. She's running now. Got about 22 degree split on both heads. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's how we change out a outdoor coil on a uh, Daikin MXS series uh, mini split. And this particular one has two heads. So anyway, hopefully this helps out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment to me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that, mel uh, hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.